Hey, hey, hello, I'm Kjokan, also known as Corvus Cornix, and welcome to Classic Movie Rambles, where I talk about all the movies that I found in my classic while painting. This week's movie is Rush Hour 3, and it's about 1 hour and 27 minutes long. And the movie starts with a helicopter shot over a city, and then cutting to Carter, played by Kiss, Chris Tucker, directing traffic, and he's singing to the music in his earbuds, and there's like a car crash. And then cutting to Jackie Chan's character Lee, he's um, escorting a, a Chinese ambassador in a limo. And Carter calls him up and talks about some girls that he uh, obviously stopped because he's uh, working as a traffic cop now because things didn't plan out too well in the second movie. Uh, <clears throat> but Lee is escorting this important ambassador, so he just clicks Carter. And then the ambassador has his speech at the conference and he, of course, gets shot by a sniper like a terrorist action. And Lee rushes after him, try to catch the sniper. And uh, Carter overhears this on the police radio, so so he also gives chase. And Lee catches up with the sniper, and it turns out he knows this sniper. Uh, he's called Kenji. And of course, Lee hesitates because there's some kind of family bond between the two. And uh, Kenji escapes, and Carter almost runs him over with his car. And sometime later, Lee and Carter goes down to the hospital to check on the ambassador, see if he's okay, and they meet up with the ambassador's daughter, Su Young, and she makes them promise to take care of the bad guys, basically. So they get some information, they need to go down to Chinatown to get a letter from a, like a locker that she placed there. But uh, <laughs> doing so, they walk into a dojo and they have to fight the master because... Carter can't shut up and he managed to get into trouble and there, then the real master like arrives and there's like a fight and then the, the true real master arrives and there's like a word play on Chinese name which is kind of stupid so um, they get some information and they go back to the ambassador and there's like a gunfight because the bad guy is there and uh, they managed to capture one of them after the fight and he only speaks French so uh, they get uh, a, get a nun from the hospital that actually speak French and there's like, like this funny scene where she interprets all the bad words forward and backwards and there's some uh, threats involved and pointing guns and whatnot and they get information so they need to go to Paris so at the airport uh, like the French airport they get stopped by the uh, some kind of French agency and they get beaten up uh, and <laughs> tells them basically that the Americans are not su supposed to do business on uh, you know french soil or whatever so that done they get a cavity search and it's like oh no and they kind of limp out you know with the but a lot of butt hurt which is kind of a funny scene so they get a cab with, with some trouble because the cab driver is not actually uh happy driving the americans and they have like this argument forward and backwards and they need to go to like a club and they get some information and there's like a fighting scene and Lee fights like a woman which uh, like a Chinese woman that's supposed to kill her him for some reason and uh, they manage both of them manage to escape with their lives uh, intact and there's also this important lady there which uh, Carter plays like a game of cards with which will become later uh, important later in the story so while escaping the club, they get chased in a car and yeah, there's a chase scene and they eventually get captured by Kenji and taken down to like a sewer area and they Lee and we get some backstory that Kenji is actually related to Lee because they kind of grew up together in, in harsh conditions. So they manage to escape Kenji and end up in the sewer and they, are, they smell like poop, I guess. So they <laughs> go to a hotel to clean up and... Uh, after here, they kind of end on bad terms, Lee and Carter, and they go separate ways. So Lee gets some information from Reinhardt's, and uh, Carter follows the girl that he played cards with before to a club. So Lee and Carter actually ends up at the club at the same time, so they figure out that this girl has the information that they need. So there's like an improvised singing. I, I think actually Chris Tucker is, does it fairly well, but... Uh, Jackie Chan can't sing in English that well, but it's kind of a funny scene. He comes in on like a, like this swing really slowly. And it's like okay, you're not hitting the notes that good, but I, it's fine. It's entertaining. So they manage to grab the girl and get out of there, uh, while other guys are trying to shoot at them. So they end up at an hotel and. Uh, uh, Carter is trying to get some information from the girl by trying to sleep with her, which is always a good thing to do. That's how uh, things 
work back in the, in the 90s, I guess. But anyway, they almost get up being as assassinated, both of them, currently by the shiniest girl from before at the club. But uh, they manage to get out of there and they end up at the cab driver's house to patch up because he, he likes them now for, for some reason. So the woman they save from the club has a tattoo on the back of her head. She actually removes her wig. She doesn't have any hair at all. And the, the tattoo is kind of like a, a insignia of all the dragon heads, the 13 bosses of the triads. That's the whole point of the story. So, and Carter thinks it's, she's actually a guy. So he has some remorse on hitting on her. But she's a girl with without hair, I guess. So <clears throat> they take the girl to Reinhardt's and uh, there's like a car explosion and they figure out that he's actually the bad guy and then Kenshi calls him up and uh, he basically want to trade the uh, the woman with the tattoo with Su Young, the daughter of the ambassador. So they go there and there's like a fight and uh, Kenji and um, Lee duke it out with swords like uh, Kenji has hands like Lee a katana and he has the Kenji has like a Chinese sword and they fight and they end up at, at like a construction beam and they Kenji almost falls out over the edge, and while this is happening, Carter is fighting as well, so uh, Lee tries to save Kenji from falling down, but he drops down and actually kills himself. He falls down like a ticket booth or something, and while this is happening, uh, Carter saves uh, Su Young from the bad Chinese uh, assassin woman, and all is, all is good. So... Uh, the Carter and Lee actually ends up in a in a gunfight again, and uh, eventually Carter hangs over the edge of like uh, the construction with like a French flag, and Lee f figures out that okay, we're gonna use the the flag as a parachute be because of course it's gonna work. So he they just grab each other one of the corner each, and they fall down or glide down while the bad guys is shooting at the at uh, the makeup the parachute or the French flag, and it gets holes in it, and they fall down a fountain. And down there, Ray Reynolds is actually, or Reynolds, something. He's waiting for them there, but uh, he gets shot by the cab driver because uh, he followed them even though his wife told him not to be uh, an American spy, <laughs> which is the whole thing. He's basically, before he told his wife, I'm going to be an American spy, and she, he ju she just bitch slapped him in the face, kind of a funny scene. Don't don't play with the Americans, or something like that. So that's the end of the movie. They they save the situation, and Lee and Carter just moves out of there. They actually hit the uh, the guy that did the cavity search uh, in the face, and they just walk off and they do a, like a silly dance, and that's the end of the movie. So what do I think about this movie? It's a good movie. It has a lot of physical stunts, and Jackie Chan always does his own uh, fight choreography. And a lot of physical stuff, I like that. A lot of cool fighting stuff. Some of the jokes obviously are dated by today's standards, but I think it flies today too. There's some racial stereotypes and whatnot. And there's this weird scene where um, when Carter is looking for the girl, he goes into like the changing area of like the, the showgirls area basically. So there are all these kind of skimpy clad women. He, uh, introduce himself as Mr. Bubbles and uh, I didn't know if I was like cringing or laughing but he and they kind of accept that he's called Mr. Bubbles and he's there to check on them so he basically tells them to take off the, all their clothes and just like okay I'm gonna start with the blondes first and then the brunettes and then the the hybrids and that's like ugh, like the, the Chinese or Japanese I was like oh that's a little cringe but the overall humor and the tone of the movie is fine. I mean, if it's on movie and, uh, and if you have nothing better to watch, it's a good pick, I guess. So anyway, thanks for listening and watching and take care.